Yep. Well, the deal with it is, yeah. life in a fight is not gonna be sugar-coated. Yeah. Right. You need to harden up. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry, okay? You gotta start getting hard, man. Welcome back everybody, Clint here today with Classic Firearms. We've got two pretty awesome guests with, with us today. We've got Ava Flanell. Hey, who, congrats on saying my last name correctly. You're right, <laughs> yeah, congrats, yeah, thank you. And uh, you may have recognized her from shooting at the course here at Thunder Ranch, which has been generously hosted by Century Arms. And of course, we've got Clint Smith. Clint, I, I've got to say, man, thank you so much yeah, for, for taking welcome. the time. Thank you, man. Yeah, thank you. Nice time, we had a yeah. good time, uh, I think, uh, 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 worked AK platform pretty good. We yep. both agree that it held up pretty good. Uh, I think that you know, uh, industry wide, there's always. I think the fancy lawyer word is arguable. Yeah, you know, they're not. They're good. I I gotta say, uh, we burned through four thousand rounds. Okay, like uh, between the people, and there were like seven of us shooting. Seven, seven and guns. So yeah. uh, seven guns. Uh, we ran them all hard. And there were no stoppages in the gun period. Yeah. And as duly noted, we shot. Um, Russian factory ammo. Yeah, the red was reloads or yeah. something, yeah. right? Yeah, so yeah. good no. ammo in theory, you know, yeah. so steel case, but it worked good. No, so. every, everything worked great. The course was excellent. The first day where we practiced all the fundamentals was great right. because you needed it for the second day. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, you needed to be able to get in there, start, focus on your breathing, focus on your side alignment, go ahead and get into the fundamentals, remember all right. that. Hit your target. I, I think, uh, you know, uh, I say so you said to me, Ava, that you weren't that experienced with yeah, the I, AK platform. Absolutely. And I was going to say, I was like, well, some of us did need the actual fundamentals yeah. class. So. <laughs> yeah. Actually, all of us need the fundamentals. That's the problem. Everybody is really interested in the high speed stuff, and most people won't go back and anchor or drop the anchor yeah. on fundamentals. So, um, still, not everything comes out the way you want because you might be an A personality, maybe, okay? Yeah. And everything needs to be perfect. <laughs> Uh, this guy's a maniac and everything went wood. Um, but uh, Ava did uh, really well and I think the, she learned a lot about the idea of using that platform. I know she's very familiar with the AR platform and um, you can tell from her site and stuff which you should all look at. But the AK was new to her, yes. and I think um, the idea of the weight manipulation and balance and how to get the gun and change yeah. the magazines, um, it's a little bit more um, touchy. Yeah. Okay, like, you know, you got to get the lip in just right. You got to rock it back where an AR, you just punch a button, drops out, drops in. And yeah. if you're smart, you stick your thumb up. So, but you did really good. And, um, you know, people go like, well, you know, how far did you shoot? Doesn't matter how far we shot. What matters is we learned how to run the gun. That's what we worked on for two yeah. days. Mm -hmm. You know, the idea of being able to shoot stuff. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, both of you. I think that if someone asked me straight up, I would go, I think the platform is zero to 300 yards. I think it does exactly what it was intended to do in, in my mind's eye at my advanced age and with limited experience with the rifle and cartridge, okay? Uh, I think that it's just a solid battle rifle. Mm -hmm. it, it's The sights are coarse, the triggers are worse, okay? You know, I, I'm, I'm saying, yeah. you know, cause like, you know, in your world, the, oh, my AR is a little touchy, right. so I need a, a Geisley whatever for 400 bucks yeah. and I go like, eh. <laughs> Spend four hundred dollars on ammo right. and shoot the gun. <laughs> right. um, I think that that's a, a solid uh, format, and yeah. um, I, I get it. You know, people go like, "Well, I want to do the cool stuff." You know what the cool stuff is? The cool stuff is doing what you're doing, having somebody with you on the range, working each other hard. Don't do range drills. You can see the emphasis on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why well, don't do one thing over and over and over? Why? Yeah. Once you got it and you got it, why don't we go on to something else? Right. I don't think we, me, even at my age, we're going to get any better by doing shit we already know how to do. Mm -hmm. right. We're going to get better by doing shit we don't know how to do. Yep. And that could be a new weapons platform. That could be a familiarization, you know, because like, you know, it's, uh, one jarhead speaking to another. He has the potential to wind up someplace where this could be the weapon that you fight with. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you kind of get an idea. Yeah. Um, yeah. If the cat gets in the way, just move. <laughs> to that sweetie, the cat. Okay. Yeah. So like her tail might be in your face or something. <laughs> this, is, this is Clint's yeah. little cutie. Yeah. <laughs> so before we get too much further into the yeah. course, um, uh, Clint, uh, you've already mentioned that you're a Marine, so uh, simplify. Yes, sir. And uh, can you give us a little bit of an introduction to yourself? Um, a long story short, because I'm not very good at it, okay? I went to high school, I graduated from high school, I didn't get thrown out, okay? And I think the cat's ears in the way. Okay, there you go. <laughs> you okay. So uh, I graduated in high school in 1967, to be honest with you, I wasn't like gonna be like a Rhodes Scholar or anything. I'm sorry, okay? I know everyone's stunned by that. Uh, so I joined the Marine Corps and 
Um, of course, when you walk up, you know, they go like, what did you do when you, I went hunting. Okay, 0311, uh, that's yeah. a grunt, okay? Yeah. Um, in 1967, everyone was a grunt. I'm sorry, okay? So everybody went to Vietnam. So I did that. Um, I got the enemy marksmanship award in March of 1969 uh, by getting shot by an AK. So that's why I said I have an intimate relationship with the platform mm -hmm. and the cartridge. Um, fortunately, they did not a very good shot or I just ducked at the right time. You know, uh, my mom declaring I was the clumsiest child she ever knew. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, that I got out in 1970 and then I was in law enforcement from 1970 to 1980. Um, and that's easy, my dad was, my brother was, my dad's brother was, so we were everything cop except Irish, okay, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So, and then I did that uh, for 10 years and, and I liked it, uh, in a manner of speaking. Um, but the problem with it is, is uh, a lot of times in law enforcement, people always go, well, I don't understand why cops get out shot, and I don't understand, because you gotta remember, okay, not everybody who's a cop is interested in carrying a gun. Right. Okay, just because they work in a gun store doesn't mean they understand guns or, or you know, you see what I'm getting at as far as that parallel, but um, I um, got to 1980 and I asked myself a question, can I do more on the inside being a cop or can I do more on the outside? Yeah. So I was fortunate enough to get asked to um, go to a gun site uh, with Colonel Cooper, uh, Mr. Cooper, pick your words because everybody's, you know, whatever, okay. Um, that was a really good three years. Um, I got to teach some when I was in Vietnam, but I had no skill for it, okay? I just, only thing is I knew more than the guy standing next to me. That right. didn't make me smarter, I just, but um, going to gun site was a really good experience because we got to, um, police, if there's 100 guys, 10 of them are your friends and they show up to shoot. Mm -hmm. 10 more don't mind, and 80 don't care one way or the other. But when you have a school and someone comes to you and gives you money, yeah. okay? And then they have a vested interest in it rather than it's just their employment. Right. Okay, I mean, some people who are in law enforcement could just as easily be building light bulbs. Yeah. Just like in the Marine Corps, you know exactly what I mean. Yeah, I okay, they're just punching time, okay, waiting for the pension. Yeah. Okay, so I liked um, going to gun site because you had people, um, uh, and that's one of the really eye opening experiences for my staff guys like Jack. Mm -hmm. Okay, when he came out of law enforcement and was here, then they were just stunned. They go, like, people want to be here. And I go, yeah. Yeah. And they're paying money, okay? So we got to start it on time, be on time, make sure everything works, okay? Because, that, yeah, that's, people have that interest. So um, I did that for three years and that was cool. Then I started my own business in 1983 for no other reason than I thought that I could, okay? And then from 83 to 93, I drove all over America. So you pick some place, Lordsburg, New Mexico, Red Lodge, Montana. I've been there, I taught Lake Placid, LA. Uh, yeah, wow. uh, living in a suitcase for 10 years is Sandwich, okay? If you want to start a student school, sell all your shit, get a car, drive around the states for 10 years, not, okay? Um, that was cool. Uh, in 86, I stopped for a year and I started the training division for HK America. And that was a cool gig. Got you a lot of machine guns, okay? Yeah. So, like, a lot of trigger time. Uh, and that was good for the platform. And then I went back into my business in 87. And then that was good. And that same time in 86, I met a guy um, uh, um, who's the only gentleman I've ever met in my whole life, okay, who put his money where his mouth was. Most people talk shit all the time about, hey, you want to have a shooting school? You want to, you want to, and we could all make, no, we're not, okay. If you're going to be a firearms instructor, you're never going to be a millionaire. Okay, you had to either be a millionaire, and if you were, why'd you become a firearms instructor? Mm -hmm. That's like, I'm a lawyer, but I teach shooting. Why don't you teach the law? Uh, you get it, okay? So it's my dry cynicism. But uh, anyway, so uh, he always wanted to have a ranch in Texas. And so we talked some other stuff and there's underlying currents, but it all comes to the same thing. Okay, your camera's getting thumped there, the cattail. Okay, are you okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah all right, okay. <laughs> so he's a guy trying to fight the cat. Uh, so anyways, um, uh, we opened Thunder Ranch in Texas and that was a uh, um, 3,500 acre facility. Uh, Everything that I ever thought in my mind's eye, mm -hmm. I wanted to do. Um, uh, you know, we had like a lot of ranges out to thousand. We had like the four-story tactical house. You know, we had a 70 by 140 Terminator 1 and 2. Um, great. Um, and I did that for 11 years and it's awesome. Uh, but I didn't own anything, which is not the point. In the end, you don't own anything anyways. Um, but to be blunt, um, when I ran a range in Texas, there were 24 people. So that means I had to have five staff people, Yeah. okay? And I think the definition of hell is go wherever it is you're going and get 10 employees. Mm. Mm -hmm. Then you gotta worry about, oh, my uterus stopped, oh, the sky is blue, okay, it's raining out. 
they were awesome. I love every one of them today, but still this cat juggling of personalities. Yeah. And so like, I kind of go like, okay, great. I don't know anything here. And I'm like, uh, with people. Yeah. So I go like, okay, great. Uh, we'll go to Oregon. Yeah. Okay. Because Heidi's mom lives two hours up the road. I was going to ask, like, yeah. why, why, yeah, why Oregon? Yeah. Well, Heidi's mom is two hours away. Heidi's mom just turned 80. So, like, you know, it's good to have your wife always wants to be close to her. And look at a map of the United States of America at night. There are no lights in Lakeview, Oregon. Now, duly noted, it is poorly placed in Oregon. It sort of could be compared to the butthole of Oregon. <laughs> okay. Uh, I like Oregon, but the I-5 corridor is, like, do a geography lesson, Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, go right on down, you see what's going on. If that side dropped in the ocean with a 29.5 earthquake, mm -hmm. I'd be like a happy meal, and I'd have beachfront property, mm -hmm. but I'm kind of kidding, okay? Um, <laughs> not. Then, um, the, um, so we moved here, and so we moved here in 2004, um, and I made this range so that, in theory, I could take care of it myself, by myself, if I had to. Right. This is the 22nd range I built. Wow. So I have an idea about how ranges and tactical houses are supposed to be built. A little okay? bit, right? So, well, no, I'm not being ugly. I'm just saying I've done it, okay? Right. And I've made all the mistakes, so then it was easy to make this one. Mm -hmm. And then you see there's an economy of motion as far as being able. I mean, you basically, this afternoon, you guys shot basically four different drills, okay? Mm -hmm. Like you did the Punisher, then you did the first rifle, you did the second rifle, then you went over and did pistol. Right. And all that is in a nice, smooth, flat curve. All the mm -hmm. muscles are in a safe direction. There's no... Yeah fornication going yeah. on okay yeah, right. and so like it's all solid and mm -hmm. then uh i've been here like i said the longest i've been anywhere except zero to 18 growing up um, i like it here it's awesome and you and i were talking ava specifically about gun laws and this and that and, mm -hmm. and people go like well you know you should move look at me i'm not moving again mm -hmm. i'm 73 mm -hmm. i'm not moving anymore yeah okay i'm um, 73 I think I've done what most people would consider to be the right thing in their life. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've always held up my end of the deal. Um, I don't screw over people. Mm -hmm. I also learned that what you say about other people says more about you than them. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now I have a bridge and a moat. I stay here. I mind my own business. And then people who come to me, I try to give them what I can give them in the two days that we have. You know? And like I said, you know your gig in Colorado. Mm -hmm. Okay. Teach me everything you know about it in two days, okay? And then, like I said, I was joking just this afternoon. I go, yeah, I'll stay with me for three more months. We'll get this sorted out, All right? okay? Yeah. So, it's, yeah, yeah. And we talked about the social media stuff because people always get like, well, oh, he yells at me. And he needs to clear his throat. I don't and, understand why anybody would get upset oh, yeah, that you, yeah. I love the commentary. Yeah, yeah. so I the deal is extremely yeah, entertaining. Yeah. And honestly, sometimes you do have to just put people in their place. Yeah. Well, the deal with it is, yeah. Life in a fight is not going to be sugar-coated. Yeah. Right. You b need to harden up. Yeah. Okay? I'm sorry. Okay? You got to start getting hard, man. The guy you're fighting is not going to give you a break because you're a pretty girl, okay? Because yeah. you're a jarhead. Yeah. They're not, they don't care. Mm -hmm. They're in it to win. Yeah. Always remember that people you're fighting are like mountain lions. A mountain lion never attacks at half speed when he goes after a deer. Why would he? He yeah. would starve. Yeah. Right. Okay? And they're always going to be sneaky. They always try to bite you in the back of the head. Yeah. Okay? They are predators. And so are the people that we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Is someone after you? I don't know, okay? You know, um, but do I wait until I'm getting my ass handed to me? Like I always tell people, when you're getting your guts kicked out your mouth in the parking lot, that's not the time to go, I should have paid more attention yeah. in Kung Fu class. <laughs> right. You know, um, oh, geez, I wish I had a flashlight so I could see what's going on. Yeah. You know, why didn't I look under my car before I walked up to it? Why didn't I pull on the trunk lid to make sure it was still down? Why didn't I look in the back seat? Yeah. And then I go, well, bad <laughs> happened to me. Uh, if you look like food, somebody yeah. eat you. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, one one good thing you brought up though is like a lot of people kind of laugh at like the range theatrics, and that's what you were talking about. Like as soon as you're done with a drill, no, don't take your finger off the trigger. You still have threats, possibly. Also, check your surroundings. Look at your partner. Look at your buddy. Is your threat actually a threat still, or is he down? Is he yeah. down and out of the fight? And so you know what you mentioned about range theatrics, I thought was pretty good because everybody kind of laughs at the like you're checking all the way around, right? And then it's like, well, the very real possibility, and you've got some pretty. I would say pretty real life experiences yeah. is that threats exist and it's not always just a guy in front of you that's down. Mm -hmm. uh, so check being yeah. situationally ob observant, right. situationally Personal aware. awareness, where are yeah. you? Exactly. And then yeah. there's logic and think the two words I gave you. Mm -hmm. So logic would dictate if you're in the hallway in your house, there's nothing to look for. I'm yeah. standing with my bedroom behind me. Yeah. But if you're in the Walmart parking lot, there's a lot of to look for, right. you know, and then, you know, um, 
Uh, again, I always reinforce people, and I would like, you know, I think talking to Ava, she feels the same way. The purpose of going to this training is not so that you can practice shooting someone, mm -hmm. okay? The purpose of going to this is so I'm not food and I'm not going to have to acquire new skills in the middle of a fight if there is a fight, you know, and, um, yeah, you know, people, they always want to hammer you. Well, you know, I think, think based on what, yeah. okay? I mean, basically you're running and, you know, like some 14 year old kid, something's on the email, you know, you sound like a gravel truck. That's because I've been yelling at assholes <laughs> right. like you for 50 years. You brought up okay. a good point and that's what exactly the Marine Corps taught us too. You're not yelling at the guy next to you, you're yelling at the guy 10, 10, 10 yards, or I'm yeah. sorry, 10 guys down yeah. right. over machine gun fire, helicopter, mortars, whatever else it yeah. might be. Yeah. And uh, so I've been claimed before, it's like, dude, why are you always yelling? I'm like, well, that's kind of instilled in us. Like I want to be heard right. when I speak, speak to be right. heard, not to be, I don't if it's know, in a fight, out. the other yeah. thing is, you know, yeah. what people forget. If this is a fight, almost every person watching this has got a car. They're going to be some, and if something goes wrong around the car and the vehicle comes to a stop and now we're both on either side of the car, you may not be able to see people, which is why I don't right. want you to look at each other. I want yeah. you to verbally yeah. communicate, okay? So, you know, it's kind of like when we talked about that triad, and that's, that is not new. You can go back in Marine Corps oh, history. Oh, shoot, communicate. Okay, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it was always in the day, shoot, move, communicate. Yeah. Great. For you and I, mm -hmm. civilians, mm -hmm. we need to talk to more people than we're gonna shoot. Yeah. Yeah. Then we need to move to break contact yeah. if we mm -hmm. can, because I, I, it's gonna be on an iPhone or a security camera, yeah. and then I only shoot as the last option. Yeah. Right. But yeah. every bullet's gonna have a lawyer attached yeah, to it. Absolutely. So it's not like, hey, I got a 19 round magazine. I don't give a shit. Yeah. Okay, can you shoot them all? Yeah but I'd shoot them one at a time to solve your problem, not fill the sky full of lead, and then mm -hmm. collect 17 lawyers, okay? Right. So, kind of got an idea. Right. And we're, we're not even talking about the stuff where people do the right thing and still get smoked. There was an LA cop not long ago inside a building, okay, he had his rifle, there's his bad guy, he shoots the bad guy, a bullet goes through the wall, and hits the little girl in the clothing area. And everybody goes, oh, the police are terrible. Yeah. He didn't shoot her on purpose. Yeah. Right. He's trying to protect the public, you know, like protect and serve. Now, is it a sandwich yes yeah. okay was he sure of his backstop probably mm -hmm. but then again where's the bullet gonna go right yeah, it's, it's hard it's, it's hard to, to to even think or comprehend especially if you got rounds coming this way yep absolutely. right you got to drop that threat and i'm yeah. sorry but misses are going to happen as, yeah. as we saw today and we weren't even getting shot at right, right. um uh, so you can imagine in a high stress situation like that when rounds are actually coming two ways uh, yeah, you're gonna miss, and then being accountable for that round whenever it goes through a wall, sure. it's gonna it's gonna be difficult. But at the same time, it's it's one of those things where it's like, look, you know, you gotta eliminate the threat, yeah. you know. Yeah. And so, <laughs> oh, <laughs> goober, what yeah. a baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, cat tail. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's so it's good, you know. And I think just one thing to add to that for people watching, you know, is I I think to, to you guys the first day, I I use the term very loosely writing. I wrote a column one time and the column was in, where's the bullet going in? Out, where can it potentially come out? Mm -hmm. yeah. Ouch, what can it potentially hit right. behind me? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so um, we are still held accountable. Yes. I know everybody goes, well, when the zombie, it's not the zombie so apocalypse. Well, yeah. when the civil, be careful what you ask for. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you know, like, uh, use some common sense, okay? And to be blunt, it's just like when people, I go like, yeah, yeah, weapons mounted light, I turn the light on. Why do you turn the light on? So I turn the light on so I can find the light switch on the wall. Right. They go, why would you do that? So I turn the light on, that way I can see some. What if they shoot at you? That's why I use the door frame. Yeah. Okay? And they go, well, you know, uh, why do you use the door frame? Because I know my shirt won't stop a bullet. Let's see if the door frame will. So now I'm starting to think in a mm -hmm. platform. And to be honest with you, I'd rather take a round than shoot you as my partner. Mm -hmm. In the dark, if we were in a foxhole and you went out to some wrong direction, got lost in a dark trip and stumbling, okay, right. you know, da, 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 okay, and it's happened. Yeah. Do you mind actually touching on that? Was it the 28, 38, 49? Yeah. So yeah. if you look at it, and again, the fancy lawyer word is arguable. The thing that I always tell people is, is I give them early on in the thing. I go 29, 38, 48. Draw a line underneath each one. Draw 100. And for Second World War, 29 out of every 100 Americans killed were killed by friendly fire. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, Vietnam, you can figure it out, 38 over 100, friendly fire. First Desert War, 48 out of 100, okay, friendly fire. Um, I mean, and if we don't think so, go to Las Vegas, look at the big bridge right beside the Hoover Dam, okay, the Tillman Bridge, okay, Army Ranger, tip of the spear, shot by his own people, not on purpose, okay, I got it, all right, but it still happens. It's the violence of action that people don't understand, the din of combat, the noise that yeah. you mentioned. Because like right now, when we go to the range, everybody puts ear pro on. Yeah. Right. Okay, it's like I had a guy in class just last week. Yeah. He says down around, he fires one round, okay? Like, I'm back over here, 
I just pull up, I get out, he fires one round, and three or four guys are standing back like this. And they go like, watch this, okay? And I walk up, no. Take that stupid ass muzzle brake off of that gun yeah. and throw it in the trunk of the car. Yeah. All you're doing, you would, because I think if I had my way, okay, I can't, but I would. I'd have everybody comes to rifle school, I'd have them put their head in, in a bucket, okay, with the rifle and shoot it. I mean, some of us did that today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Not, not that's me. I, I, I guess, but it's still. No, 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 I didn't now, do that We were all just like, well, he's oh, about yeah. to find and out. And then, <laughs> then remember, no ear pro exactly. had that, okay? No ear pro on top of Okay, because yeah. you know when people go into combat, yeah, maybe by modern standards, yeah. you know they have like your pro communications can talk, but like I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of grunts running around that don't have that. Shit. Oh, okay, yeah. you know what I'm saying? When I was and, pulling string on artillery in Morocco, I mean I can hear it right now. Something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I was. What does that sound like? And it goes really loud. It sounds like a really loud buzz, which I'm not going to do now because I'll bust the camera. And then about two months from now, it goes to a different level of buzz. And then about two years from now, it's a D. Okay, yeah. and that shit never goes away. Okay, and people, I kind of go like, yeah, why would I have a gun that beats my ass when I shoot it, audibly or otherwise? Yeah, you're like, well, you know, I do 30 out six. Probably not if you're only like four foot ten, 90 pounds soaking wet. Okay, yeah. now I don't care what your gender is, right? Still too big a gun for yeah. whatever you're, yeah. well, you know. You know, we're just trying to mitigate that awesome recoil of the 5.56. Yeah, that's it. I always tell just quell, to quell the stunning recoil of the yeah. 223. Right. So, but brings up a point the AK was different. Yeah. I think Ava found out something, not changing the subject, but she changed out some about him being short stock. Yeah. But that's a lot of true combat weapons, like weapons like M1 Garand. You know, historically, guns were shorter stock. Yeah. Um, then, if you look at a lot of those people, like I told you about my friend, uh, you know, that was in the Chosen Reservoir. Yes. The guy's about that big yeah. and maybe 100 pounds on his yeah. best day. Yeah. The people were different then. Yeah. And now, you know, you get some like Adam that like, blocks the sun when he gets out of the car. Yeah. Okay. You know, and so. Um, you have to make adaptations, but I stand by what I say. Don't put anything on any firearms platform that doesn't solve a problem that exists. Right. Okay. We need sights we can see. Okay. We already know those are a little. Those are, yeah. Yeah. And we need a trigger. Duly noted, it's a little unique. Yeah. Okay. And in this case, we didn't need a light. Yeah. But if you can, like, see what you're shooting at, light it up if you need to, press the trigger, and then manage the gun as far as the manipulation. And I think. You know, that was a big thing. People go like, what did you guys do? And I go, I made him run the gun a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. one-handed, non-dominant hand. Yes. Yeah. Was, Everybody yeah, got to fun. shoot injury drills, so she yeah. got to shoot. And that's straight up. You hold the gun, okay? You got like a breast for the front of the gun. But she'll tell you, you know, you got to take the mag in. You got to take the mag out. You got to load yeah. it, okay? And not all that stuff's easy. And people go, like, well, I don't get it. And you will if you get shot. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, what's, what's really eye-opening about this class, too, is, you know, like, don't get me wrong. When it comes to the tactical mm -hmm. gear and everything else, I've got my Mark 18 that's like a thousand pounds because I wanted to throw all the yeah. lights, lasers, and everything on it because yeah. I like to shoot with nods and all that stuff. But when you do a course like this, what you find out works the best is a rifle with iron sights and a sling. Sure. And if you need if you need a white light because you're going to be shooting low light type stuff, awesome. But we then, what we yeah. learned today was we were able to effectively engage multiple targets out to even 300 yards, yeah. and we did everything that I think is absolutely practical. I mean, it's the urban combat rifle, right? And then the variable for you would be your how old her? Yeah, 31. Okay, great. So he's but 31. A baby. He's a baby. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm 73. Right. So when I get to that point, I might add a red dot. <laughs> right. It doesn't help me shoot better, but it yeah. helps me place the sight yeah. on target better. Right. But I still never take my iron sights off. You want to get a, you think I was grumpy the last few days? Come here with a scope on a rifle like an AR and no iron. I will beat you to death for three days over that, okay? <laughs> I don't care where you put them, stuff them up the butt stock, stick them in the grip, I don't yeah. care. But someplace on that rifle, there's gotta be a set of iron. Yeah. I know, this actually made me rethink my entire setup now after this. Really? And also, yeah. yeah, and how much I've gotten just used to using either red dots or, or scopes. Well, it's like, it's like I mean, he's gonna know exactly what to say, complacency kills too. Yeah. You know, because you get so used to what you have right now, then all of a sudden what happens when that battery, that optic goes down, yeah. you know? Then yeah. all of a sudden it's like, oh crap. So I said it to you and you saw it as a good example today when we did the four target drill or four area drill. What makes everyone believe that if there's a fight, you're gonna fight with your gun? Yeah, right. absolutely. Right. So I would prefer Okay, to have a student of weapons craft mm -hmm. who can pick up any gun and hit a paper plate, yeah. handgun 10 feet, rifle 25 feet. People go, that's really close. Uh, I'm sorry, you need to do a little research on where gunfights are. Yeah. 
Okay, right. and then again, the guy's well, it's 500 yards, I need 3.2 mils hold left. Yeah, and I'm shooting them wide as a civilian at yeah, 500 yeah, yeah. yards. Yeah. So then there's the, uh, and I didn't say it wasn't fun. I mean, everybody <laughs> likes to wang somebody at 500 yards. I mean, like you hit the guy at 300, you go, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I put a dent in that guy. Yeah, absolutely, it's fun. But um, I think there's just, um, you like to get people to think and rethink, okay, really, because we don't carry our equipment. Right. Mm -hmm. Our car carries mm -hmm. our equipment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We carry 25 yards to the car, the car carries it to the range, we mm -hmm. carry 25 yards to the bench, we do a couple mag dumps, we go, we're good to go, we go yeah. back and get our shit, go home and go, I'm ready, okay, I'm Armageddon. Send that zombie apocalypse. And I kind of go, uh, I don't know, man. I'm in so it's like you've barely touched yeah. on just yeah. one category. How about yeah. how, when all of a sudden now, You've got family and friends involved. Now all of a sudden you got you can't go to McDonald's or your grocery store to pick up food. Yeah, you there's know, no 911. There's no there's no ambulance. Right, and we've seen that in this country recently. Yeah, you know, sure. and, yeah. and that's and that's so. Yeah. You guys just did urban rifle. Do you know what a trapdoor Springfield is? Yes. Okay. Uh, a trapdoor. Yeah, the, the lid comes open. Yeah, yeah. And so I've taken the class that you did urban rifle with a trapdoor Springfield. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> now it wasn't as fast as everybody with an AR. Mm -hmm. But I learned to run the gun really good. Yeah. So my forte for me personally has always been take a 3040 Craig and run the class. Take an 03 Springfield, run the class. Take an M1 Garand, yeah. okay? You know, um, take, you know, Trapdoor Springfield. And you go, that's old. Yeah, but you don't want to get hit by it because it's a 520 grain bullet at 1200 feet per second. Yeah. So you just got hit by a bathtub, stupid. Yeah, definitely. Okay? And I know how to load the gun, okay? So, I mean, there's those things that you would look at and you know, people go like, well, you know, you like, sound like, it doesn't sound like anything, okay? What do you want to know? What do you want to do? What's your goal, okay? Mm -hmm. Who are you trying to help? Yeah. Like, what are you looking at? I don't need a SWAT You don't need SWAT You need someone who can like load the gun and unload the gun yeah. and not shoot their own cells or their own kid. Yeah. You know, and um, it's the human nature to always try to step beyond something. It's like, you can make any kind of competition you want. Mm -hmm. As soon as it's introduced the first time, someone figures a way to cheat it. Yeah. If you want to see something really cool as far as, in my opinion, one of the coolest things in America is go to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio. Okay. And go to the museum, it's a museum Air Force, mm -hmm. and go to the POW section where these guys are in prisoner of war camps in Germany. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And look at all the shit they made with nothing. Right. To escape. Tunnels and passports and clothing and buttons and IDs and all this yeah. stuff. You go like, I just sit around and go like, hey, can somebody give me a paper towel? <laughs> and, like, and you go like, no, you know, when you paint people in a corner, they can get really innovative. Yeah. The problem with it is, is if I can get some degree of innovation, and you know, I, I think when you look at that, people go like, well, they do the same thing today. I don't know. Remember those people that were in those PDO camps? They all just got out of the depression. Their yeah, first yeah, job yeah. was flying over Germany. Right. Yeah. Okay. So like, I think people were more creative then. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think they didn't rely they had, on, yeah. I'm gonna go to the grocery store and buy yeah. whatever, okay? You know, there are still people out there who believe, you know, that this chicken in a plastic wrapper, that's the way it came right? from the chicken. I know. And I'm kind of going, uh, probably not, yeah. okay? <laughs> um, but um, we can only help the people who want to be helped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the people who don't want help are usually the ones who the most. Right. So basically I go, go to hell, yeah. okay? I don't care, okay? And you know, it's like you and I were talking. A lot of times they go, well, I got, you know, I'm not sure as a woman that I, I got like, I don't care what your gender is, okay, but look at it this way. If you happen to be a woman and you happen to have a couple kids, your skill set needs to be to protect yourself because you cannot protect those two children yeah. unless you can protect yourself, mm -hmm. okay? And it's just like I tell guys, Okay, if you have a relationship, don't give your hand-me-down, piece of shit, junk-ass gun mm -hmm. to your wife, right. okay? I buy my wife's guns as good as mine or better than mine, because yeah. she may be the one who saves my life. Mm -hmm. And what am I gonna do with the money 10 years from now when yeah. I'm laying in a box? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, so, works out good, yeah. so, um, yeah.
So that's, it's a great mindset, and that's something that we've been trying to do is open up a lot of the demographic that we have on the channel as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so I don't know if you're familiar with like Katie on the channel. She does a lot of that, like concealed carry, top five handguns for uh, for females that are full size, something like that. You know, yeah. Ava I know does a lot of that as well, mm -hmm. and and she's an actual firearms instructor yeah. out here doing stuff as right. well. Right, absolutely. Too. Yeah, and which I think is super awesome, by the way. <laughs> you know, it's like you and I talked about women only classes. I don't care one way or the other. Okay, it yeah. doesn't matter. And I'm not anti. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is. I don't see the difference between you getting your ass kicked and him getting yeah. his ass kicked if you're both getting your ass kicked, okay? And then when it comes to guns, you know, people like, I think a lot of poor choices are made. Probably the worst gun made is a two-inch revolver. Yeah. Exactly the wrong person always buys it. Small and cute are for puppies. Yeah. Right. Comfort should be a pillow. Yeah. yeah. And then you know a lot about two-inch guns because you've like been exposed to them, okay, because that. I that mean, world. that's what they want to equip everyone all the yeah. time with. Yeah, you know? right, yeah, with the, with the pink worry, rips. Yeah, you don't have yeah. to worry about the slide. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And, and Clint, yeah. you were mentioning something too about like your old ways and all that type of stuff. Um, sure, yeah. well, you know, you, you get stuff and people go like, hey, Clint, you're old, and I go, yep. Yeah. And they go like, you carry an old gun, and I go, yep, yeah, because it's no see a 1911. And then they go like, and you teach old <laughs> and I go, yep. Yeah. And do you ever think Actually, there's a, yeah. I mean, honestly, so I was prepared when I came here because I didn't know that much about you. I was prepared. I was like, great, cool. We got another FUD teaching us. We're going to be like, <laughs> he's going to pull out his 1911. He's going to be like, this is, you know, polymer pistols, no go. And well, it's funny you say it like that because it's like you see some of the stuff that's hanging on the wall. I won't mention anything because I don't know. Yeah. What to, I don't want you want to, yeah. to be out there. And it's like, yeah, that. I know, yeah. but that's what I was thinking. Yeah. And, I, and I was just like, man, this is going to be like a long two days. Like, I just figured you were just going to be like, Kind of just was a long two days, anyways. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it was good. It was yeah. like I was like really surprised, and a lot of the stuff that I'm teaching now, and I'd like to think like I'm pretty current, right. is the exact same stuff. Like we have the exact same mindset, right? And it's just so refreshing to see that, and just because there's a lot of instructors out there that will say stuff like, "No, like you know, shoot to kill, like keep shooting them. They're down on the ground." And, and then the biggest thing, what really won me over is when you took us to the Think House right. mm -hmm. and you were like, so I, if anything, I try to teach people like, don't even yeah. enter this situation. Yeah. Avoidance is key. And yeah. that's what I've always taught my yeah. students is Break like, contact. if you can yep. avoid a situation, absolutely avoid it. Right. I tell people all the time, I live alone. I, I have no problem with that because I have I could use a gun really well. Right. But if somebody's breaking in and they're downstairs, I'm not going to go and investigate because right. at the end of the day, they could take whatever they want, and that's what insurance is for. Right. If they come up to the second floor, then it's game on. Right. But I liked that you're also you know you being this like you know badass. We were just like yeah, you know like you would just think like you're trying to teach all these like tactics and mm. and it was it was just kind of refreshing. Not being ugly, but a lot of people who are teaching that. Never been in a exactly. Spot. Yeah. Okay. You know, and everybody goes, hey, "We gotta go get them." Okay. Well, you know, if you're in the military, no. clearing buildings, thirty yeah. percent casualties yeah. are acceptable loss. Yeah. Okay. For you, thirty percent of your body that's paralyzed. Yeah. Is that acceptable to you? No. No. Then right. why the hell do it? Absolutely. You know, you got three kids. Yeah. Losing three kids. Okay. You're and still alive. And I didn't alive. sign you up for the military. That. I'm not right. in the military. Yeah. I'm not trying right. to. You and know. even if you are in the military, okay, they're not going to go through the front door. They're going to set explosive outside yeah. and breach the wall, yeah. okay? Or, in my world, I would just have, hey, yo, drive that Abrams up here, stick that muzzle <laughs> right in the window, yeah. All y'all hang on, wham, yeah. okay? Yeah. Get your yeah. JTAC on the phone and, yeah. you know, like, right. yeah. 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 that thing, yeah. And people always go, how do you clear a stairwell? And I go, 500-pound JDAM attached to an F-18 Super Hornet <laughs> with a 25 up your ass, which is the very old radio, which I know they don't have anymore, but you get the point. Yeah. Okay? So, um, I think people sometimes forget the, the finality of what they're talking about. Yeah, I agree. Know? You know? Like, I used to have a deal in Texas, and I had people, like, really themselves bad over it. If someone was really, really felony stupid, mm -hmm. you know, like bad, like I'm going on, I, I had a body bag in Texas. I put them in the body bag and I zipped it up. Mm -hmm. And then I made the class carry them around, okay, to the different ranges. And then when we got there, I left them there for a while and then I'd done it. And that's really crude. Do what you want. But I tell you what, when they got out of the body bag, most yeah. people had a different mindset. Yeah. You can talk all the shit you want okay but it's like i said you know like i'm gonna i'm gonna and i'm gonna and i go here's the thought why why mm -hmm. am i doing that yeah why am i even going in the building why are mm -hmm. you going downstairs 
You know, if you hear something downstairs, okay, you already know you got a four pound dog, right? Yeah. As long as you and the four pound dog are behind the door, shut the door, Absolutely. shut the dresser, yep. okay, make ready. If yep. they breach the door, like here's Johnny with a fire axe, I'm yep. gonna set their ass on fire, okay? And all that shit is gonna be good to go and you're still gonna have to go to court. Then that, then that, then that, then that, yep. okay? Yep. You know, and people forget, like I get it at the shot show, they'll come up and tell them, hey, you know, if you had two minutes warning, what would you do? I go ahead and back that tractor right out that door, I wouldn't yep. even open the door. Yeah, no and I put that fourth gear and I'll be at the bridge in two minutes. Mm -hmm. And the price of fixing the tractor, the door, and all that other shit is less than a lawyer. Absolutely. Okay? So, like, I don't know. Um, I think people feel like they have to kind of maybe do it without being ugly. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have a different reason. I think a lot of people feel like they have to do a dog and pony show. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times people go like, um, well, you know, I was in the police department for 25 years. Oh man, I've seen a lot of people in the police department for 25 years. I wouldn't want behind me with a loaded gun. Well, I was in the military. Okay, we'll do that. We'll do military. Everybody likes that. For every guy on the ground in Vietnam carrying a rifle, there were seven guys in the rear with the gear pack and shit. I love those dudes. They sent me ammo. Yeah. Okay, they brought me a truck. I got a hot meal once in a while. Love those dudes. Yeah. Okay, but this idea that everybody, you know, like, yeah. When you see guys my age now, old guys, they're all, eh, most of them don't shave, I still shave. And they, they wear like crusty fucking hats because it makes them look cool, you know, <laughs> Vietnam vet. And then you walk up and go, yo dude, awesome, appreciate your service, okay, what did you do in Vietnam? I'm guaranteeing nine out of 10 of those bitches were snipers. They'll tell you, I was a sniper. Right. Really? Okay, that's awesome. If all the snipers I met since I got home from Vietnam would have been snipers, I wouldn't have had to go to yeah, Vietnam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Yeah. And like, it's a joke now, like a family joke. Yeah, yeah. I'm not laughing at people, but yeah. I didn't know. Uh, we'd be walking down and like, we went someplace insane. And this guy, you know, he's like, and I got, ask him a five bucks, he says sniper. Walked up, <laughs> sniper, ching, behind door number Damn. three. Why? Yeah. You know what? Uh, in retrospect, I wouldn't want to go do it again. I wouldn't take nothing for it, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't, you know. And I guess if I'd have been in the back, Shoveling shit in Louisiana, you know, and then I guess I went and got shot. Yeah, yeah, you know? right. So like, you know, oh, that was really cool. That's no, it's not cool. Yeah. The San Jose Marksmanship Award. I was absolutely in the wrong place at the right time for a split second, one time in my life, and I thank Jesus that I walked the fuck away. Yeah. Okay, and people go like, well, that's really cool. Not nah, now it's 73 in the morning and you wake up and you go, ah, oh, that is a little cranky this morning. Oh, excuse my French. Okay, but that's what I say, so you have to get over it, okay? Um, but yeah, um, yeah, it's an awesome life, you know, yeah. when you talk about the big picture. Yeah. And you know, I really look forward to having people like yourselves. You got your, your, your channel where you can like, explain weapons to people, make them understand the history of where this comes from. This country is founded on this, okay? Oh yeah. Okay, it, it wasn't founded on like, oh, Ford cars, I'm sorry, that is awesome. I, awesome, people like yourselves are doing it. Mm -hmm. You're the future, you're the next generation. Mm -hmm. And the people you teach are gonna be the next generation. And that's what's gonna keep it going. We, you know, people go like, we're gonna, okay, y'all get to decide, everybody gets to decide. And I always love this shit. you know, some brain surgeon sitting here goes, I'm not turning my guns in. Well, your wife is driving her Mercedes, okay, to drop the kids off at their special school before she goes to the country club. And you think she's gonna give up her $3 million house that Mercedes <laughs> and those kids special school for your gun? I got news for you, probably ain't gonna hunt. So we may be back down to that 3% again, yeah. okay? But see, there is where somebody takes it and then they bend it, and now they make it so like, that's a bad thing. That three percent a long time ago wasn't that bad, mm -hmm. okay? So quit, to, you know, quit twisting the tail of the cat, mm -hmm. yeah. okay? Here's the thought: shut your mouth, yeah, okay? Lower your profile, yeah. Like you know, from being here with me, I've been here 18 years. If I go to town today, clearly two thirds of the people in town have the only people who know who I am in town are the people where I have, like, I go to the hardware store, yeah. The cashier lady, she knows me. Mm -hmm. I go to the bank. Yeah. Okay, but I don't go around with a Thunder Ranch. Hey, you know, yeah. take the gun from my goat, and bite me in. Okay, people go, well, you should be more proud and you should stand up for it. And I go, really? Well, how about this? I turn out 14 people every week who shoot better than when they got here, and they're safer and they're probably smart enough not to shoot themselves. What did you do this week? Mm -hmm. Yeah, which sounds smart assery. Okay, but you get my point. I do. So we, you're generating knowledge in people. You're generating people. Okay, mm -hmm. that's awesome. That's that's the future, you know. 
No, I'm not being ugly, I'm being honest. What? I'm 73, so 10 years from now, you think I'm still gonna be like, you know what I'm saying? Teaching? Maybe could I contribute? Hell yeah, yeah. Hell well, yeah you're no. gonna be teaching. Well, people yeah. always ask me, and I go like, well, I ain't gonna run up no hills like when yeah. I first got here. Yeah. Okay, you know, but um, yeah, I think that's the thing. I think we need to know more about where we came from. Yeah. Yes. You know, when I say Jeff Cooper, people yeah. go, who the f is that? No. Okay. You don't know who that is? How about Ray Chapman, Eldon Carl, mm -hmm. okay, John Plain. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell Reed, you should know his name. His granddaughter was just on the set with the guns, okay, at the Russ movie when Alec Baldwin shot. Mm -hmm. That's his granddaughter. Mm -hmm. He's one of the original seven combat masters. You don't know who that guy is? Mm -hmm. And people go like, well, what does it matter? It matters a lot, okay? The g world didn't start with Glock. Yeah. yeah. I remember the first one, okay, 1986, I was working for HK. They walk in and set this box on my desk, black plastic piece of shit. The top I thought it said clock. <laughs> they go, this new gun coming on the market, we want you to shoot it, because I was the training director. Yeah. Took a gun downstairs, wham, 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 shoot, wham, 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 took it, wham, 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 took it back upstairs, set it on the vice president's desk and go, shoots, works, it's ugly as shit. But I always tell people, well, Gaston's flying around the world, one of his five G5 jets, and I'm driving a Ford 250, so what do I know about marketing? Right. You know what I'm saying? So, like, if it's marketing, I'm the wrong guy. Don't ask me. Okay? I'm not the marketing guy. Okay, so, but uh, they did really good, both of them. Uh, the Jarhead, I would expect nothing other than that, okay? And I know he's waiting to be a staff sergeant. Marine Corps, get off your ass, make my staff sergeant, okay? Ava. Uh, I have to admit, I haven't looked at your channel a lot, but I looked at it so that same thing. You checked on me, I checked on you. That's yeah. fair, right? Yeah. Okay, and I'm um, pleased to meet you. And I appreciate your intestinal fortitude, girl guts, okay? Me hung in there the whole time, no cheese whining on my foot. No, no. Mm -hmm. uh, born again hard, man. She like hammered them all the time. Oh, and yeah, she, and she took it and gave it back, too. That's, yeah, yeah, that's good. Well, that's uh, round guys, that's what you gotta do. Just uh, yeah. punch them back, okay? Yeah. You know, like, what? Uh, eh. um, you know, and I always tell people the good thing about being a girl, in my opinion, like Heidi, when I, we first got married, you know she's younger than me. Mm -hmm. And I go, like, whenever you're at the range, okay, guys will walk up to you and go, hey, would you like to shoot a Thompson submachine gun, little girl? And I yeah. go, Go, yes, sir, I would. And go and burn every round they'll give you, okay? Yeah, and then that's, that's how, like that. that's yeah. how yeah. you gonna learn shit. Okay, so, and I, you know, it's it's a lot of fun. I've had a lot of fun. You know, a guy walked up to me one day and he goes like, hey, you know, uh, your daughter shoots pretty good. And I go, yeah, so is my wife. <laughs> you know, your wife is here? And I go, yeah, that's her. Oh, shit, sorry. Hang on, ah, whatever. Okay, so I've been lucky. <laughs> Heidi stuck with me a long time. Um, no, she's that's, awesome, by the way. She's really, amazing. That's, really, that's, really, that's really the little quiet mouse in the closet. Okay, uh, you do not want to be downrange of that bitch in a rifle fight. I mean, I, all y'all just, you might as well just sign all your insurance papers before you go, okay? Because that, she can shoot and I'm like very proud of her. She's like worked at it very hard and you know what I mean, okay? Mm -hmm. It is in theory, I believe, a man dominated industry for the most part, mm -hmm. but it's Absolutely. becoming less and less. Yes. And I personally don't like the marketing manipulation towards women. Mm -hmm. Like, let's make a pussy willow yeah. pink gun. Yeah. Dude, I'm gonna fight with a gun. I don't need a pink gun. Yeah. I saw a gun the other day that some guy painted for a woman and it was pink and it had a unicorn on it. And I go like, no. all in color. <laughs> Now it was an awesome thing. No, that was definitely for a dude. No, no, no. no. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I don't know, you'd be surprised yeah. nowadays. No, though it was for a lady in this case. And and I kind of go, <laughs> duly noted, ma'am. Okay. But I'm not sure I want that introduced into evidence in court. Right. Uh, so is this where I come clean and I'm like, I have an AR that looks like a unicorn? No, not this at all. So embarrassing. Okay. I just lost points. <laughs> no, you didn't actually. Anyway, no. No. <laughs> the deal with it is it's one thing, okay, to have something to take their range and shoot, okay, yeah. because I think it's another thing that'll break ice for you with certain people of your, you know, whatever. And um, the other side of that coin is that doesn't necessarily mean, I mean, like I have an M1 Garand, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and if somebody goes, would you fight with it? Oh, hell yeah, I'll shoot through the whole house with that bitch. And I don't yeah. have to worry about hitting nobody because I ain't got no neighbors, okay? <laughs> but if I pick a gun up right now, I have to tell you that I'd probably pick up an AR. Yeah. And it's just simple, it's like a 1911. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I started carrying one in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had what people would call an accidental discharges with them, okay? Yeah. Which is accidental is when you think you're gonna fart, but you poop yourself. Mm -hmm. So I know I'm now is to be incompetent discharges 
because I didn't know as much as I thought I knew. Yeah. And then I've grown on that, learned from that. Fortunately, I didn't kill nobody, didn't shoot myself. That's awesome. Uh, so I've tried to learn from my experiences. And I got to tell you, I've carried the gun for 50 years. Okay, you know, uh, but I also, if you came here, like when you guys came here the first day yesterday and you're sitting there, I was carrying a Glock. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's just simple, carrying yeah. Glock 17. Yeah. People go like, why would you? And I go, cause it's a good gun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's got a lot of bullets and I can carry a spare magazine. Yeah, and yeah. I got news for you. Wait till you see my Terran tactical that's coming. Cause Terran's one of my friends, okay? I got a red barrel and red base plates in mine besides a two-tone black hey, guy. Okay? Look at you. Oh, okay? oh, People go like, whoa, what's that? And I go like, hey. It's like my flame shotgun. You're like, it's yeah. my Gucci Glock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I got a flame shotgun. People go like, why the fuck would you do that? It's not tactical. It isn't supposed to be. Yeah. It's supposed to make all of you nuts, yeah, which yeah. it work. Yeah. Okay? You go, well, I wouldn't expect that from you. That's exactly why I do that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? You know, that's why I do it. Okay? Yeah. It's just, everybody thinks they know. Well, you know, he's old. He did, you know, he cut, you know, he, you know, he only teaches weaver. No, you know what I teach technique wise? I teach what makes people hit the target. Yeah, yeah. which I liked also. Right. And I, I don't give a shit. I'm not selling shit. I'm saving your life. Yeah. And whatever, you, if you come here and you shoot like that and everything you shoot, you hit, yeah. I, why am I fixing yeah, this exactly. broke? Right. Know. You know what I mean? Now, if I think you're like, whoa, shit. Yeah. I shot Wyoming, which you heard me comment a couple of times. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. The fuck was that? And like, you didn't. You wouldn't have hit a moose right then, okay? <laughs> um, then we will try to fix stuff. Yeah, right. But you know, people have enough stuff. We all, none of you, not watching you, 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 me. None of us get to shoot as much as we'd like to. Mm -hmm. yeah. None of us. That's why this two days is really good for you. Yeah. You gotta shoot. You don't have to worry about. You know, and I, oh, I gotta go home, gotta tear the dog, and I gotta like, yeah. you know, have to just focus. And that's why I like this also. If people come and they come for a three day class, well, why don't you do five? You wanna know why? I'll tell you exactly why. People get too freaking tired, okay? Yeah. They punk out, okay? And I Fourth get tired day. Of those people. Yeah. No, yeah. You, you can so fatigue, you can fatigue quick, and um, especially if it's something you don't often do. Sure. So, so I understand too. It's a mindset thing. Like you said, once we leave here, what do we do? We go home, we study the pamphlet, then all of a sudden we're we're back out here the next day. When I say home, I mean we're going to the hotel sure, right. down the street, and then all our minds are focused on is okay, cool. You know what? I don't want to go and get completely, you know, uh, absolutely hammered at the bar down the street sure. because I know I'm going to be up, and I don't want to be one of those. Heat yeah. casualties. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I know, I know, I know personally that I'm going to want to actually hit the target, right. and so I want to study this stuff. I want to learn it. So it is a whole mindset coming out here, which I think is really. There's cool. some element that's, a, that's parallel. You'll understand it. And I, I'm not like discounting you at all. Okay, but we both went through boot camp. Yes. Okay. And did you guys have that thing at the end? What are the they crucible? Yeah. Oh yeah. See, in my day, we didn't have that. Right. Our crucible was Vietnam. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take F that. <laughs> FMS Westpac. Poo. You're yeah. the yeah. out of here. Yeah. So there's parallel thoughts there, but the problem with it is those, those parallel thoughts are not valid unless they can be inclusive of people who are outside that. Mm. Right. So when somebody goes, you're growling, I'm not growling. I'm saving your life. Yeah. Right. And if you can't take me barking at you a little bit, you're gonna yeah. die. Yeah. yeah. I mean, some right. of the, the commentary and you know, like, and I, I know a lot of the internet out there knows them as Clintisms. Yeah. Uh, but you know, the commentary, you know, it's one of those things where some people who may not be introduced to that environment right. are, are, are taking it personally, yeah. right? Yeah. But, but I hear it, and even if you're yelling at me, I'm over there like, that I know. was pretty good. I know. That's that was what pretty I, funny. That's what we were yeah. talking about. You know yeah. why I yell at people? Mm -hmm. Because I know who the, I'm yelling at can take it. Because after right. doing it this long, I can read people really good. Yeah. Just like if we're doing something and I think that you're starting, not you, but it, let's say I'm dealing with a lady mm -hmm. and you can start to see like a little tear well up yeah. or something like that. And I go, you're not, here's you're the deal. Stop. Stay right here. I'm right with you. I'm right yeah, behind yeah. you. Yeah, I'm yeah. on your yeah. side. I never stand and look at people when I teach. I always yeah. stand and look at the target. Yeah. So it's me and you against that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I never make eye contact with them in the sense of like, you know, like, okay, you're an idiot. Yeah. Okay. Why? Okay, yeah. dude, yeah. she just changing diapers yesterday. Give her a break. Yeah. Okay, right. like stick your face with a load of shit, okay, and then come here and be all yeah. tactical. <laughs> right. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Or not. You yeah. know, this is just about kids, but um, yeah, it's in many ways, and it sounds tacky, but it's true, and you've all heard it before, okay? What I want people to do is what I want them to do is what I want them to do, which is save their life, but I need them to think it many times it's their idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then I need to manipulate it, and I. I have an ego, I'd be a liar if I said otherwise. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I like to think that I always have mine on a great muzzle and leash, mm -hmm. okay? I can push people really hard, but I also know when to stop. Yeah. 
And I think that's a skill set that's acquired over time. It is. You, know, you can figure out how to, you know, like, and it doesn't matter if you're a private with 50 other privates, they're gonna kick your ass all the time and as soon as they walk away, the next guy steps in and he kicks your ass. But we're not in the Marine Corps. We're not in the Army, yeah. okay? The people you're training in Colorado, they're, they're, they're not and they don't wanna be. Yeah. They just wanna like, hey, can I get some basic yeah. knowledge here? And yeah. so that's a cool thing. You know, I, I think it works out good, so. Yeah, and you're introducing them to that too, which is super mm -hmm. cool because right. that's something that I, I preach all the time in the videos is like, hey, great, you watch this, you learn something, great, go grab a friend that's never shot before, take them to the range. Yeah. Right. Because the more I've people we get involved. I've taken lots of people who've yeah. never shot before. Yeah. One thing I, yeah. Yeah. You know, when I talk to that, I tell people if you're gonna go shoot, I, I think the old sort of Boy Scout thing, you know, like going swimming, during summer camp, go with a buddy. Yeah. Okay, I think it's always a good idea, people, if you go to the range, you should, okay, don't take my word for it, research it, find, see how many people have been found on a range, okay, dead, and generally not like from suicide like this, yeah. it's like shot through the femoral yeah, artery yeah, yeah. and like that. I think it's a good idea to always go with a buddy, mm -hmm. and you already know that we hit a little bit while you were here, even on meds, yeah. as far as putting tourniquets on, carrying yeah. stuff with you, okay? Yeah. Um, uh, do I want someone to get shot? No. Is there a possibility? No. Mm -hmm. Guns are dangerous, okay? But cool. then again, the car was dangerous since you drove to the range Absolutely. end. Absolutely. Getting out of bed in the morning, okay? Standing mm -hmm. in the shower while you reach out to adjust the you know, yeah. electrical cord. Mm, yeah, life is dangerous. And if it's not, what's the fun in it? Yeah. It's just like to go through it as long as you want and or be stupid, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And it's simple, different people are wrapped different ways. Yeah. You yeah. know, some people, like you know the deal from the military, the number of guys who commit suicide, and yeah. stuff like that, that's a bad thing. You know I mean? We it should is. work on fixing that. Mm -hmm. we, we should, yeah. I mean, over you know the past 20 years, I mean, actually we've lost more guys, we've lost over double, almost triple more guys that lives lost in Afghanistan and Iraq right. due to suicide. Well, if yeah. you research Vietnam, more guys have committed suicide in Vietnam related incidents or I, you know, yeah. dialogue than were killed in Vietnam. Right. Wow. That was 58,412, so we're not addressing that. No. Yeah. And if we address that, you know, then, you know, I, I think it's the same thing, you know, yeah. it's acquired. It's like, you know, you know, somebody goes, well, ha, 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 and I go, I'm sorry, I don't think it's funny. Yeah. Mm, here's the thought, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, mm, but, you know, not to deviate too far, but no, I, I think that idea of, like, it's an acquired skill, it's a perishable skill, yes. mm -hmm. and it's something that theoretically done incorrectly could basically be dangerous. Yeah. So like if you don't know how to put a tourniquet on, you should mm -hmm. learn. Yes. If you don't know how to stuff a hole, you should. Yeah. You know, if you don't know what a Heiklin seal is, you should figure it out. Mm -hmm. You know, if somebody asks you, you go, hey, I want to buy a gun. I go, great. Okay. Here's your tourniquet. Here's your Heiklin seal. Here's your quick plot. Yeah. Here's your gauze. And here's your gun. And here's your ammo. And here's your proper holster to fit the gun. Yeah. Okay. Not some nylon piece of shit, which was designed for pantyhose. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not guns. Okay. Yeah. But. Whatever. Yeah. Right. Now, that's another thing, too, that we, that I've mentioned before is also is like, hey, the gun is fun. It's sexy. It's cool. Right. But more than likely, you're going to need first aid yeah. than anything else. I've seen more car accidents than I have shootings in my mm -hmm. life. Yeah. Right. So, I've literally had students leave here and one guy specifically going the other way. Okay. Stopped at a car accident and put a tourniquet on a leg bleed, you know, between here and Bend, Oregon. Really? Okay. And yeah. then, you know, um, yeah. yeah, you know, I told you about the. Kid yeah. getting hit down mm -hmm. the road, you know, 20 miles away, head on in a car wreck, okay? You know, unfortunately, you know, he lived, but, you know, isn't it awesome? You know, like, I don't know for sure that I'm gonna wake up tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. we were just talking about this. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. like, you know, I'm it's saying, like an hour I don't know that yeah. for sure. Yeah. So, like, people go, like, well, you know, you're kind of weird when you teach, you're really rigid in one format, but you have this very bizarre or dry sense of humor. I go, yeah, because it's funny. Shit. Right? That's yes. exactly what it's we were funny. saying too. It's yeah. funny shit, okay? Yeah. Like, yeah, you're dumb enough to stand there full value stupid while I shoot you with a 30 caliber rifle in the chest. Hell yeah, yeah. we'll go for it. Let's yeah. dance, okay? You know what I mean? And I don't mean to ugly, I don't want to shoot anybody, but it is funny, yeah. you know what I mean? And, you know, no, it's very serious. Yeah, I got it. It's serious, okay? But nothing says at my age that I'm, not, I'm gonna go and teach. But I'm telling you, as long as I teach, okay, I'm gonna have a good time. Yeah. When I'm not having a good time no more, I'm not teaching yeah, no yeah, more. Yeah. Okay, that, and that's it. Okay, yeah. so like, uh, and I don't do it at the expense of other people. Just like I told you, you saw it here. I never give you a problem that I didn't give you the answer to first. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. yeah. So that's really bizarre way of teaching too, because a lot of people go like, whoa, that screwed up. And they go, no. Yeah. no. Why would I want them to fail? 
Yeah. It's like me taking you in the tactical house, putting you on the footprints and go, go get them. Absolutely. You go like, yeah. well, what, what the f do I do? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, and it's a waste of rounds. Yeah, yeah. Right? what I'm like, saying. Uh, the example that we can use though is like the offset. Yeah. Right? Like, hey, here's that dot off on the right side of your target. Training Aim dot. at that dot and keep your iron sights on that dot and shoot. Mm -hmm. And if you're, if, well, I, I kind of cheated a little bit because I was like, okay, the dart's target. I'm going right. to aim a little bit higher. Yeah. But I already knew that going yeah. into yeah. it. I mean, right. it's, this is from yesterday. No, right. You know, and so it's like, but, you know, a couple of others that haven't have been exposed like you and I have, um, uh, you know, they're shooting, you know, a couple inches. But see, that would be a typical yeah. staff sergeant of Marines, okay? He didn't follow instructions. That's true. Right. I said to hold on the dot. Yeah. I didn't say to shoot, shoot the, the dot. dot. Yeah. Okay. Simple, following simple instructions see, is one thing I've been yelled at a lot. All I say is a corporal of Marines to unfornicate a staff sergeant. Yeah. Staff sergeant? No. <laughs> But no, it's awesome. It's good fun. And, you know, that's, uh, that's just something that, you know, people need to understand. It's always, you know, how can we get people to get what we're doing without just like, oh, you know, you're an idiot and you didn't do it right. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You yeah. got it. Yeah. And I think we would all agree that there are some people who shouldn't have guns. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there are some people who shouldn't have children. Yeah. yeah. There are some people who shouldn't have cars. Mm -hmm. Okay? There and all those things, okay, except children, cars a tool in my mind. I cause I use it to go to work. I use it, you know. Um, people go, well, guns are yeah, well here's the thing, it doesn't say anything in the Bill of Rights or the Constitution or the Federalist Papers about cars. No. I read all that shit, so you know. Yeah. Okay. It does say something about guns in there though. Yeah. 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 So like put that in your pipe and smoke it, right? Yeah. So it's awesome. <laughs> But then always remember in your world that one I gave you, okay, always remember the Miami shoot it. Okay, because that was one by a one armed guy with a revolver. Mm -hmm. That's one of the most significant fights, okay, in the last 50 years. Easy, yeah. okay. Yeah. 100 probably. Yeah. And you know, people always go, well, I gotta have it. And I go, no, you don't. Yeah. You gotta hit the target. Yeah. Right. And you gotta hit it till it stops. Yeah. And then other than that, I'm pretty sure do we like uh, wore you guys out, okay? But mm -hmm. this no, been no, awesome. no, this is. First of all, having the one-on-one -on -one time or the two-on-one yeah. -on time yeah. is uh, absolutely awesome. Um, yeah. Again, if you guys don't know, uh, Clint Smith, 10 out of 10, would recommend this course. And uh, I really like the idea, going back a little bit, what classic firearm, know what I did there, yeah. should I use if I were to take this course again? And I think it'd be kind of fun uh, because you said you did it with the trap door. Yeah. yeah we, I got a 03 laying around, you sure. know, and things like that. Yeah, I got it with that. I've had, a whole, yeah. I've had a whole class do the whole thing and everyone in the class shot in one garbage. Yeah. Yeah. And that know, was yeah. cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very well, light gun, very easy should, to handle. Yeah. They should answer in the comments below. They, I, I think they should. Yeah. But uh, I think we can wrap it up there. Um, uh, again, Clint, yeah. thank you so thank much. You, thank you. Yeah. Miss yeah. Ava, thank pleasure. You. Okay. Yeah. Nice and, job. I appreciate it. Dig in. Be a tick on an Alabama coon dog. Teach, yeah. teach, teach, okay? Yeah. Let's make better people, okay? Make better people with firearms, okay? Yeah. And um, we were talking about teaching, and I go, like, I always teach people, I go, I'm gonna teach a class a week after I'm dead. Yeah. I'm just gonna be stuffed like that Tink's deer. <laughs> yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right. So that's the minor part, but I very much appreciate everybody's time who watched this, and these guys were awesome in class, okay? And again, we wanna thank Century and Classic, yeah. okay, both, and then um, um, it was like, Easy to find. Hot chicken, Colorado, shooting guns, okay, so <laughs> easy stuff, okay, so. And I thank the guy doing the camera because he's like been like behind the curve all the time, so. Yeah, everybody well, well, we, and just so everybody knows too, Ryan got on the gun a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely it. smoked yeah. it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of go like, what are all these other monkeys doing? This guy yeah. can shoot. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's, yeah. he's a trigger puller like me. Yeah, he yeah, likes yeah. to get behind That's the gun it. too. That's awesome. And, uh, but yeah, but we'll, we'll leave it off there, guys. So um, uh, first of all, Thunder Ranch, I think I think that's pretty much uh, Thunder Ranch Inc. on, on Instagram. What's yours? Instagram out. What's yours? Ava Flannel underscore. Yeah, okay. F-L-A-N-E-L-L. -L. Yeah, easy. <laughs> there okay. you go. And of course, you guys know and you better love ClassicFirearms.com, your number one stop for all of your Second Amendment needs, wants, joys, and all that stuff. So guys, as always, we appreciate your business. God bless. We'll see you next time at ClassicFirearms.com. And again, thank you too yep, so much. Yep, no problem. Thank you. He said that once or twice.